the North. Known for its industry, hardworking and innovative people, we are the engineers of the past and always look for solutions for the future. Our Creative North wants to celebrate that. Welcome to Our Creative North, the show that celebrates the creative and digital media sector right here in the north of England. Now, today's show is all about collaboration and why it's important not only to print off your business cards, but also work in partnership with the businesses that are right here on your doorstep. Today, we've got a really exciting show where I get to meet the great Terry McStay, who runs Design Network North, and we send one of our creative pioneers to go and try out a bit of music. So Creative North send our creative pioneer, Donny Jeffs, who's from the Academy of Music and Sound, to write a song at Ginger Music Studios. I'm Donny Jeffs and I'm a musician from Teesside. Uh, I'm Dee Dowling. Uh, we are a Ginger Music Company, uh, which is in uh, Stonehill and Bill Key, Kato. Hello. Hello, mate. How's it going? How you doing? Hello, Hi, I'm, I'm Donny. Nice to meet you. Going through the studio. Let's go. Thanks. So this is our uh, main studio space. Um, we've got a large live room here. We've got the control room. We've got a little room upstairs. Um, actually, I've got two studios, actually. Um, my first studio was upstairs. Uh, we've got a little music shop and stuff here. So. All right, wicked. So all kind of things, music, you know, take a seat. So you're a guitarist, singer, songwriter? Yeah, yeah, songwriter. Uh, just got a couple of ideas floating about for a couple of songs, so if you want to help us out there. Absolutely, love to. So, um, so what kind of style are you, are you playing in? Um, just to, like a couple of acoustic guitars would be all right. Some mm -hmm. vocals probably and just see what I can put to it. Took some drums on, yeah, stick yeah. some guitar on, bass and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've got a um, couple of musicians coming down this morning to help you out. Um, we were absolutely great, so that should be pretty cool. Oh, good, yeah. Great stuff, we'll get a work <clears throat> I think the thing we'll probably look at is mapping it out from sort of beginning to end. Yeah, like a guide track. Look, yeah, at the, we'll look at the kind of structure of the thing, you know. So the introduction, the verse, and the chorus, maybe drop down in the middle section, um, you know, and, and see how you want to do it. And we'll think about tempos and we'll think about the sort of style of it. What I'll probably do is the software that I've got is pretty cool. I can just knock up the drum track quite quickly so we can try and get a feel yeah, yeah. for what's going on. Um, and then essentially we can sort of build it and you can say, well, actually, no, I, I, I want there to be a fill there. I want to, that to be to, to stop there and be a quiet part or something. And then when we get the musicians in, we've got this sort of situation where we've, we've got a kind of a, a mapped out piece, you know, and we can visually kind of see it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then just a case of, of them being able to sort of interpret that in their way. Which I think is important. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sounds good. Yep. Brilliant. Okay. Shall we? Uh, shall we go? Yeah. Let's start out. Cool. Okay. So we're in the studio. Um, software. Everything's here. Drums, bass, keyboards. Everything you need. Um, we'll just kind of begin with your idea. I, what I'd like to do is kind of hear what you, what you're gonna do. Yeah. You know, and then we'll get an idea for the kind of feel. All right. We could. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. I was just gonna give you kind of a. Some quite basic, you know, like three or four chords, uh -huh. quite long, if you know what I mean. Okay. Uh, I was thinking of some, you know, like a bit like one, two, eight house rhythm kind of tempo, if you know what I mean. Right. It's quite easy. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's I'll cool. Give you a little run through. <laughs> So listen, let's, let's get a tempo, first of all, um, it's the most important thing. Uh, it's a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's quite fast. It's too fast, isn't yeah. it? Okay, so let's, 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 take that, let's take that back to 120 and see how that feels. Uh, it's quite, I'm quite relaxed with that one. You okay with I think, that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that's fine. Great. So, what kind of? I mean, obviously, we've got a live drummer here. Yeah. So, if whatever whatever we do is going to have that kind of live feel. Yeah. Probably better, I think, if it's alright with you, to just to maybe try and give it like a live drummer sound. Yeah. And then we can um, 
we can kind of sort of take it from from there, yeah. So um, the next thing to do would be to kind of grab a, a drummer, um, get some sounds going on, get some beats going on, maybe decide what kind of beat you'd like. Okay, it might take a little while to do that, but we'll just we'll play around with some of the sounds. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a uh, new drummer track. Okay, so he's coming up with this kind of sound. Yeah, it's kind of like a break beat. Yeah, it's all right. Just to give me a heads up, I mean, we've got a kind of a, a beat going on. We've got a, a um, we've got an idea of the feel and the tempo now, which is great. So we're in the key of E. Yes. Right. Um, how many sort of sections have, have we got? Um, so there's like a couple of bridge sections and a middle eight. The rest is verses. The chorus is the same notes as the verse, I think. Okay. So if we map this out, so can you do me a favour? Would you? Would you play? Have you, it's an entire song. You've got yeah. verses. You've got you've got words, and you've got the chorus. Yeah, and definitely. It's cool. Yeah. Can you play me those sections? If I, if I just play you that one beat, would you just sing me that? Yeah. What you've got so far is so, okay. Cool. And, I, and I'll just try and get a feel for exactly how long it's going to be. Uh, okay. <laughs> I love music and what they have created in such a short time is amazing. As a young man, I was the cowbell player for the Blue Oyster Cult, Don't Fear the Reaper. Could be true. I'm Lloyd, I'm drumming on Donny's track today. Um, Dee, who owns the studio, got in touch with us last night and said there's some session work going, do you want to record? So I'll have a talk with Donny about what, what he wants from the track. I'm going to give it a shot now and see, see if I can get to the end without making a mistake. My name is Stevan. Uh, I'm a guitarist and a music student. Uh, today, I believe I'm going to be recording a guitar part for Donny's track that he's recording. OK, so we're at that point now where we're sort of tracks done to a point, you know, we've got this mapped out with verse, bridge, chorus, middle section. We've got the drummer working, you know, for you, but really, it's still you want that sort of human aspect of it now. So Lloyd's going to come in and do the track for you. Um, I guess it's down to you now to sort of tell him what you think you would like it to do in the certain sections. You know, well, it's quite like a elongated chord sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like the music's quite flowy, so like best to just keep it keep it simple, sparse. simple, bouncy. Uh, yeah, just go with it, man. Uh, it's always good when people give you like adjectives to instead of telling you what to do. That's, that's, you can do a better job that yeah. way, you know. So the session musicians get to recording to make Donny's track sound so professional. Coming into today, I wasn't really sure what to expect at all. I kind of had this vision of me and a few other musicians sat about with guitars just trying to come up with something. But um, it was really organised and uh, like someone knew what they were doing. So it's it, it went pretty well there. Uh, we came in and um, I had a couple of ideas for songs and me and Dee sat down and started recording some um, you know, rough tracks of this tune, and uh, he added some uh, drums to my guitar, in, and um, we just done a rough recording of it to play over with the band, which is what we've just done.
It does take a lot of time and effort and practice, but it would be brilliant to be able to be as comfortable as he is with the music software and being able to produce stuff and to, uh, this would take me probably weeks to set up, but I just walked in and like, he sorted out within a matter of like 20 minutes, he knew what was going to happen. He had an end game in sight and it's going really well. I've had a great day getting out of college and recording some of my own music and getting a free sandwich and generally just, you know, doing something that is a bit of a branch of the thing that I love and that's music. Now we've all been networking before and it's a vital part to any business. Now I'm getting to meet Terry McStay who runs Design Network North, based right here in the Northern Design Centre, to find out a little bit more about his organisation and what they do for companies. So Terry, uh, you've been very supportive of uh, our Creative North and Creative North in general, but tell me more about Design Network North and what you guys do, how did it all start? Um, well, Design Network North was set up about six years ago, um, really because a, there was a feeling that there was a need to bring people together who are interested in design, or more than interested, who are passionate about design. I think in, in terms of the manufacturing industry in this region, there's been a big push over the last 20 years around um, efficiency and doing things really quickly and cheaply, which is fine, but there's only so far you can go with that. So we're trying to really push this idea that, um, as well as being um, fast and cheap, you can be absolutely brilliant. And I noticed uh, you've got the 3D printer downstairs as well, and uh, part of what you do obviously is introducing new technologies to, to, to companies. Uh, tell me a little bit about this uh, 3D printer. I heard you had a bit of a situation with your, your cufflinks. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I mean, we, we've got a 3D printer uh, that we've had it for about 18 months now. We, we kind of got that as a, a demonstrator, really, because it is a, quite a new technology, but it is being quite widely used and it's got massive potential. Um, and it's essentially a way of having something on your desktop that can turn the designs that you've got on your, on your computer into real physical objects. A couple of months ago, I um, forgot my cufflinks and I thought, oh, what am I gonna do? And then I thought, well, actually, I've got a 3D printer. So I went on to, uh, there's a website called the Thingiverse right. where people can upload designs of almost anything and you can just download them. Uh, there were dozens of different cufflinks designs, so I downloaded one, printed them off, and there you are, I had a set of cufflinks for the day. So it's all about collaboration. Have you got any upcoming events that people can get along to? We run a, a monthly event called Rise and Design, which is on the second Friday of each month. Uh, we have a different theme each time, and we get sometimes 70, 80 people coming along. Uh, the one last week was on, on branding, and we had a lot of people talking about um, different aspects of, of branding um, and how to protect your brand. Um, but as well as hearing from expert speakers, it's a really good opportunity to just to meet like-minded people. A lot of people do say it's a really good networking event, it's a really good opportunity to meet some new, new clients, new, new potential partners. Um, and then the next one is on the 17th of April, um, and that's more of a, an opportunity for people to, to tell everyone who's there what they do, so they can show some slides, 
talk about their current, um, some current projects they've worked on, some of the particular things that they, they can offer. But there's all those details on the website and they're very much, a, um, a, a, they're, they're open to anyone. Um, so anyone can come along and we hope that they'll be of interest to a lot of people as well. I mean, I went to the branding one and uh, unlike other networking events, it's not just a case of pushing your business card in front of people. There's some really like-minded people there and you learn from them as well. And I came out with so much more knowledge about branding and how to protect it from that event. I can't recommend it enough. Um, but Terry, thank you again. Uh, really Pleasure. appreciate all the support that you guys give. And um, until next time, cheers. Thanks thank so. you. For a recap, Donny Jeffs from the Academy of Music and Sound was said to meet Dee Dowling from Ginger Music Studios where they recorded their track. We started Ginger Music Company uh, about eight years ago. Uh, my wife and I are uh, both performing musicians. Well, um, my background's kind of bands, Christine's background was theatre, and so we ended up starting this, this thing, this business in this place. And I started getting a bit more production work, which is pretty cool. I know at the same time I was also training because I'm a an Apple authorized trainer as well. I teach like the, the software that I use in the studio. So um, it's become, you know, like a bit of a playground. I lo I'm loving it. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying coming to work massively every day because I just get to sit in my studio. So we're a bit of everything. We're a one stop. Oh, that's that one stop shop thing, you know, but we kind of are, you know, because we're, we're, we've got everything in one place. And of course, we're, we're opening a venue next up, which we're really excited about uh, in about three months' time. Generally, everyone that um, works in recording studios these days knows what they're doing. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. You know what I mean? But um, this guy's obviously created something of his own back. Like we're in a building right now. What you know, he's kind of worked off himself to build. And you've got to kind of respect that the guy knows what he's doing. Um, came in and um, immediately just kind of uh, after showing him, you know. 30 seconds of music, he was kind of like, yeah, I know what I'd do with that, I'll kind of sort this out. He's quite clearly very experienced. So I was a guitarist in, in a band for years, that's what I did, I, I played guitar, not even the lead guitarist, just a rhythm guitarist, happy, singing a bit of bang balls. And I did that for a long time, moved to London when I was about 17, 18. Um, I played in a bit, covers band and stuff around, I loved that, it was great. I some, still got great friends who are doing that as well. Um, and, and then I sort of went away, did my thing, ended up coming back because I joined a band and then I just kind of stayed. I uh, wasn't really planning on staying. Uh, and then became a singer. And, and when there wasn't a bass player in the band, I got the bass playing job. So I ended up being from a guitarist. I ended up being a lead singer playing the bass. I sort of moved around quite a bit. But I've always had this mega little passion about recording things and producing things and writing things, you know. And, and so, so, that, so now my life is, is uh, I'm, a, I'm still a working musician, uh, but, but I, I write and I produce and I, and, I, and I work in the studio. And a lot of what we do here is, is uh, a lot of what I do in the studio is uh, I, I produce things, I'll, I'll, get, I'll take a little, like we did today in, in some respects, you know, that my, my life is a bit like this actually. You know, I'll take a little thing and I'll make it into something. To be a good recording engineer requires an attention to detail and, uh, and an understanding of how sound works and how, you know, a, a, lot, of, a lot of technical things. Um, to be a good uh, producer um, requires all of those things as well, because you have to understand the relationship between stuff and, and, and how those things fit in the picture. But um, requires another, another edge of creativity, I guess, you know? Um, and I think, I think to be able to say to, a, to a, a writer, you know, hey, why don't you try, have you thought about this? Have you thought about doing that in the, in the bridge or that in the verse, or why don't we introduce this instrument? That's something over and above being a recording engineer, you know. And generally, those things, those jobs are kind of separated anyway. You know, in, in the industry, you'll have a you'll have a sound man and you'll have a, you know, a an ideas man. You know, all that experimentation that happened in the '60s. It literally was just about a band getting a sound, going into a studio, and and and, and those guys in the white lab coats reproducing that sound as perfectly as they could. You know. And then I guess with the onset of, of multi-track and then toys and being able to sort of mess around with stuff and effects and, you know, bands got a little bit. And as, as they were kind of allowed to be more in the studio, then I guess, then I guess one guy in the band would be a bit more into the sounds and, and shaping the textures and somebody else. And maybe he would be more of a producer. I don't know, if you didn't have a musical background, how could you advise on something musical? I get that, but having said that, 
a lot, a lot of my most talented students, incredible people, didn't have a musical background. They had this kind of understanding, this innate understanding of beats and how to put things together and, and, and sounds and textures. And, and, that, and that's the beauty of software, you know, that's, that's the beauty of being able to sort of, you know, I, I, I write stuff and, and I'm sitting with my laptop in the house with a pair of iPhone headphones on and, 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 and before I know it, three hours later, I've, I've got this thing, it's got, it's got all the elements of a, of, of a band mix. And, I, and but, you know, but I, I'm coming at it from a, from, a, from a band musical kind of perspective. Um, these guys are coming in from from like you know from sa from sounds and textures and beats and stuff and uh, there's a real art in that you know. Music's a huge part of our lives and a huge part of the creative industries. It's great to see a young person with so much talent getting involved. Let's talk to Rob. So there we have it, another episode of our Creative North. Now hopefully we've inspired you to get out your business cards and start networking. Now if you're a young person wanting to get involved or get a job in the creative and digital media sector or a business wanting to find out a little bit more about how we can help you, please visit our website www.creative-north.co.uk where you'll be able to find out more information about how we can help you, your business and hopefully get you a job. Until next week, we'll see you later.